All right, let's get started. Welcome everyone to Product Week, an event designed to help you level up on your product management skills and career. This event is brought to you by ABP List, the largest peer-to-peer -peer learning platform in the world. If you want to learn, discuss ideas, and get mentorship, ABP List is the perfect place for you. Come and join our community. We are 100% free. For Product Week, we have something very exciting for all of you. Uh, we are giving away an Apple Watch to the best learner of the week, kindly sponsored by Product Academy. All you have to do is share your learnings from the events on LinkedIn and Twitter, tag our speaker, and tag ABP list. For details on how to participate, please refer to information on this site or that is in our chat window, the message in our chat window. Now some housekeeping rules before we get started. Please keep your camera on uh, so that the speaker can see your reaction. We also encourage everyone to use your real name on Zoom. The presentation will be 30 minutes long followed by a 15 minutes Q&A afterwards. We are using Slido to help us manage questions this time uh, for the Q&A section. And if you have never used Slido before, it's very simple. All you have to do is scan the QR code on this particular page or that is displayed behind me throughout the session, or click on a link that our team will be sharing in a chat window every 10 minutes throughout the presentation. We encourage everyone to submit questions using your real name because anonymous questions will not be considered. You can also upvote other people's questions on Slido. And lastly, we are recording this session uh, so that every one of you will get the link to access it when it's available. So for today, we are very honored to have David Wong with us. Uh, David is the founder of Product Academy and also Group PM at Linktree. Uh, he currently leads the core product team at Linktree building experiences for 23 million users worldwide. Prior to that, he spent 12 months building a tutoring startup called Begin with a Y, which partnered with Ronald McDonald House of Charity to provide free tutoring free tutoring services for sick kids. In his spare time, he runs an online product management school. He has taught at Harvard Innovation Labs General Assembly and spoken at various conferences like leading the product. So he's going to talk to us today about five types. What are the five types of product managers that are in demand right now? So without further ado, I will pass over to David to start his presentation. Hello, hi everyone. Um, welcome, welcome to this talk about product management. Uh, I'm Dave. I've been doing product for a very long time. Um, yeah, and as you mentioned, I am currently a hiring manager and I work in Linktree and run a school at the same time. So uh, very happy to, to share this presentation with you um, as in, you guys embark on your journey to become a product manager, or you might be working with product managers and you want to see what type of PMs are in demand right now. So yeah, that's what today's talk is going to be all about. Um, so this talk is sort of interactive. So um, yeah, feel free to add in chats and, and, and questions. I'm gonna ask, ask some questions along the chat and uh, yeah, and, and feel free to add your perspectives as well. But I say this to every single one of my talks and I do appreciate you taking the time uh, learning about product management. Uh, I am very, very grateful that you do that. And some of, some of you guys are sacrificing your dinner time some of, some of you guys are sacrificing your lunchtime and your breakfast time. So really, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, let's get started. First question for here. Who, who here works in product management right now? Feel free to put it into the chat. Um, who's a product manager or product analyst or junior PM or APM um, or heads of product, directors of product? Anyone want to put it in the chat? Oh, yeah, Cecilia, yep, yeah, you're a product analyst. Well, well done, awesome. Um, oh, hey, JK, you're here, great, you're a PM, awesome. Uh, Leslie is a PM, yeah, great. Amit is PM, sounds awesome, awesome. Uh, oh, Anishihan says conversational AI PM. Oh, we'll touch that in a second, actually, very, very good. Awesome, so yeah, a few of us in PM, uh, some of us are not. Um, 
then this is what this talk is really about. Um, I really want to help you by the end of this course or this talk. I love for you to understand well, what is the role of a product manager? What should they be doing in a company? Uh, second thing is I want to help you understand what skills are required to transfer between different types of PM, the different styles of Kung Fu that you might play in this industry. Um, and the third thing is I want you to walk out saying, knowing, hey, which one is the right role for me, for my personality and for my career path? Um, and that's what today's talk is all about. Um, a little bit about me. Um, so yeah, that's me. A few years ago when I visited India, awesome place. Love it, would just go back in a heartbeat. Um, and uh, I've been doing PM for a very long time. It's probably my 16th year in product management. Um, I'm currently um, working Linktree uh, as a group PM. So I hire PMs and also um, manage PMs and coach PMs at the same time. Um, when I say I've been here for 16 years, I've literally been doing it from the ground up, from, from, from the junior PM to a senior PM to a lead PM to a head of product. I've done all the roles uh, across the industry. Um, so done it feel it and and I live it and breathe it and this is why actually what inspired me to teach uh, as well at General Assembly um, and also uh, what I have at Innovation Labs and also a bunch of other conferences and just really preaching the craft and sharing my experience because product management is a very lonely craft there's not many industries and not many uh, places where we can get together so uh, yeah so I've done a lot of this in the past uh, thousands of students coached people done all this stuff uh, and I was very lucky to be in a position to work in different companies across startups and scale-ups and, 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 um, and enterprise. So very lucky to know how SaaS products get built, how startups actually operate product functions. So, and I'm sharing all that with us, uh, hopefully in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. Um, so well, from a product perspective, uh, what you get out of this, um, if you're not a, a PM already, and or if you're interested in getting into product management, um, you can see like all the leaders in the tech companies, they have been PMs before. If you look like Sonda, it's an ex-PM, Satya, ex-PM, and Steve Jobs didn't want to be a CEO, he'd become a CPO instead. So uh, you, this is a very important role. And, and a good mentor told me, um, he says, hey, Dave, when you work in technology, and especially in SaaS companies, your product strategy is the heartbeat of the business strategy. And, and that's why, you know, a product management role is so important in tech companies. Um, besides, you know, making an impact in people's lives, you get to learn this mindset. Um, it's a business perspective that you take for life. Um, and leadership as well. You get to lead teams um, that with, with uh, indirectly through influence. Um, and this is the thing that allows you to build, build companies um, and get people to join you on your mission. So, that's what you get out of product management. And question for this group here though, um, why do you think product management is important, right? These are glamorous things and shiny things that you get from the role, but why, why do you think it's important to have a product function and why not just have a marketing function and, and, and sales function or R&D function? What do you guys think? Feel free to chat, put it into the chat. No one yet? Yeah, oh yes, yeah. Yeah, Burhan says someone to want, so, someone to coordinate everything across the product life cycle. Spot on, yes, product life cycle, everything. Love, love how you think about the life cycle, that is spot on. Yeah, there needs to be a point in person um, to, to, to marry marketing, development, design together. Yeah, absolutely right, Nick, yes. Uh, the glue that glues everything together, uh, the product management function, yeah. Um, ooh, having very quickly, I'm going to pick a few. Uh, so Zilia asked, dedicate, it, dedicate to what has to be done, prioritizing tasks. Yep. Um, JK asked, ensuring everyone's focused on solving the right problems for the right customer and the business. That is spot on. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So keep typing these up. And I think, you know, if you guys are watching the chat, these are the reasons why it's important. And to summarize, um, the importance of PM is really comes down to three things. Uh, product function is there to solve 
you know, deliver business outcomes um, to by solving customer problems. And these are very important things because um, often a business want to make money, which is important because, you know, money fills the vision, um, but you still need to solve problems for people, right? Because um, as, at the same time, and that's what our product management is there to do, is to marry those two things together. Um, and the second thing is to keep the company, oh, sorry about this black screen, um, is to really keep the company um, away from this shiny object syndrome. You're going to see this a lot, uh, especially in technology. It's very easy to build products, right, uh, as you know, um, but it's very hard to build the right product. Um, and that's what product management is there to do. Just keep people away from this shiny object syndrome. Um, and also the product eye, the way that you see this, uh, you know, from, from a product perspective, is going to give you a competitive edge in the market. Um, and you're going to see this term like product-led organizations or product-led growth. What that means is that you're seeing the world through the product perspective, and that's the thing that makes you stand out from the market. Um, yeah, so this is a very, these are three very important points on why product's important. And the agenda for today, uh, I'll try to smash these through very quickly. We've done the intro already, which is great. Uh, what is the, I'm going to show you how, what is the function, how does, it, how does it structure, uh, before I get into the role, because you need to see, you don't understand or how a role is even created in the first place, like who comes up with this, this, uh, you know, this, uh, product manager for, for AI or who product manager for, for new venture, how does that come up? So I'll talk about that. Um, you know, what does a product manager do? Um, and then I'll, dump, I'll jump into the five types of PM that's in demand right now, or things that, that's in the market, that's in, in hiring. Um, and then we'll, and then, uh, then I'll talk about how do you get yourself into those roles um, if you want to break into those roles. And then we'll do some Q&A at the end as well. Cool. So lots to cover. So I'm going to jump straight into it. Um, so the PM function. Um, so... PM function looks after these three areas. Um, so there's always some sort of business objective. The business wants to, um, to hit some goals, like make some return on investment for investors. Product function sits right here. So our job is to come up with the product strategy uh, to, to marry the vision, um, the overall goals by creating a vision and a mission, product roadmap, personas, metrics. Um, and then that gets into delivery. Um, and the delivery is all the product backlog, design experiences, feature roadmaps, and so on. And what you see often is that companies will have a business objective and they jump straight to the developers and the developers will make things happen. And then they spin around in wheels because there's not much uh, strategy involved. Uh, or the role of that strategy has been pushed into a developer that's actually making that product, um, which is a big, a lot of burden. Um, so that's what product function there to do, just to sit in the middle, um, translating the business objectives into delivery. Um, so yeah, that's product management function. And the role of a product manager um, is actually, there's a few things actually. Um, my throat is back at you because every company is different. What do you guys think? What do you guys think the role of a product manager? What do they actually do? Anyone? Jack of all trades and the master of none. That's probably a common one that we see all the time. Um, yeah, it's probably some of the stuff that we mentioned previously as well, like, you know, dedicate, uh, you know, having someone to serve the right product and the right purpose as what Diana mentioned previously and having someone to, uh, you know, a point person to glue everything together. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, and ensure everyone is it's on the same page, aligned to the strategy, that's perfect. Yeah, prioritize like crazy. That is exactly what product manager just description is. Yep, and understanding the problems. Love it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the role of a PM, it depends on, on the company. And, and, and there's no one set rule to say, yep, this is the product manager and you do this. It's very different. Um, every company is different. Every expert that you speak to is going to give you a different definition of a product role. Um, if you speak to Marty, Marty Kagan is the guy who wrote a really good book called Inspired. He will give you a different definition. Um, Melissa will give you a different definition. And, and Brian DeHalf is the guy who founded a, a really good product roadmap tool. He will give you a different, different definition. And I guess what I'm trying to say here is, is define your, your role um, of a PM in your company. Um, and this is how I see the role of a, of a product manager. If you're looking for some framework to help you define it, um, 
from my perspective, I, I think a product manager is really the business and technology conduit who sits right in the middle. Um, they, they, they must know the customer really well. So they have to be an expert on the customer, the technology, and also the market as well. And that's what they do. They need to do a lot of market research, customer research, and they need to know how technology work. Um, otherwise, it's, it's they just too high level. Um, and your job is to discover product opportunities. Um, why? Well, is to prioritize the resources of the company um, to achieve a business outcome across the product life cycle, someone mentioned previously. And that's what a product manager does. Um, it's a very, very stressful role, um, but also very, very rewarding at the same time. Um, so, and what is the product life cycle? This is it. So every product go through this life cycle from idea to validate, to validate, to plan, to discovery, to delivery. And then at the end, you want to make it uh, adapt to the market. And that's the, the life cycle. And how does different teams get structured then? So before I get into the roles of the five different roles, I'd like to take us through from my, from my perspective, how do I come up with roles and put them into like LinkedIn and start hiring people? Well, mainly there are, actually before I go into that, how it works for any hiring manager, as I mentioned previously, business goals, product strategy, and a delivery, right? So what that means is that a hiring manager should have a product strategy put in place. And I won't go into this detail. There's a lot you need to think about in product strategy. Let's assume I come up with a strategy of how we can achieve those business goals. Um, and then I'll think about my team structure. How does that work? How do I structure a team around me so we can achieve those goals that I promise that the business and promise the board on? And we're going to make us a million bucks or two million bucks. How, what team do I need? And that's where my budget comes in. Uh, and then I'll start hiring and start formulating different roles um, for my team members. And that's how most of the hiring works um, in, in real life. Um, sometimes you might inherit the team as well. Like when I joined Linktree, I inherited a, a, team, a team member, a product manager, and I hired the rest and that could happen. Um, and, and then when you're looking at teams, they're actually just main, there's mainly two types of product teams. There's product teams that solves problems for external customers. And there's product team that solves problem for internal customers. Um, and that's how usually product teams are structured. And all the roles that you see are out there, it's really can be categorized into these two areas. Um, so you have a role that there to solve external customers and external product teams. Um, so you could see a product manager that is sliced up by user types, like, you know, a buyer product team and a seller product team, like on Amazon. Uh, you might have a product manager that's sliced up by market segment, right? By, by a financial services product team or by sales channel or by KPIs or growth PM, um, by, um, by geography, right? Product manager for the APAC market or LATAM market or by features as well. So, you know, this feature, edit feature, or Instagram story feature, which is pretty common in, in SaaS companies. Um, and these are just different ways that to, to for the product, for the head of product or the group PM to figure out how can I achieve my strategy using this team? And there's also internal teams as well because there are internal products, right? Like platform products that you see. Um, so it's very common in companies like Google and, and Alaxian where they have a lot of platform products like identity systems and payment systems. So you have a common services type of product manager. Uh, and you also have a platforms product manager um, and you all might have like a company capability product manager, like a product manager for analytics or, or dispatch and fulfillment. Um, so yeah, so these are like internal customer facing product teams as well. And in my experience, it's usually a combination of both. Um, this is what, how I structured my team in my last company. So you have a product leader, um, so you have a mix of customer facing teams like customer experience product team with a KPI, um, and then you also have, you know, a, a platforms product team that serve internal customers. Um, because in my last company, we had a Salesforce platform and Salesforce requires a lot of development. So we had an internal, internal team, but we also had external team that looks after growth, partnerships, and also customer experience as well. And that's the customer facing part. Cool. So that's how usually teams are structured. Um, and let's take a look at the market now. 
uh, where are we now, uh, right now, post-pandemic? Um, well, post-pandemic, their product management is in high demand, which is awesome. Like, if you're in the job market, this is the, the right time to be. Um, like, uh, as businesses, they want to they realize the importance of technology and they re- realize the importance of prioritizing ideas and, and not wasting money and not wasting resources. Product management is in high demand right now. And, and these are the top, the f- most common roles I'm seeing in the market. And, and I'm communicating this to you to really help you understand what works for you and what what personality um, fits your style of Kung Fu. Because in my experience, you could have, it's, it's just diff- they're just different. Uh, they're, not, they're not better or worse, just different. Um, so you have a generalist PM, that's the number one role that's in market right now, PM for everything. So you have a generalist PM. You also have a new venture PM. So PMs that's actually looking at new venture, new, new types of work. Um, you also have PMs that is not on the, on the black background, but <laughs> uh, and a, te- a technical be- PM, PM, right? As I mentioned previously, a platform, a technical PM. Um, you might have someone who's a domain knowledge PM, like an AI PM, um, or a uh, or marketing uh, or marketing conversion funnel PM. Um, and then you have growth PM who looks after growth uh, initiatives and work really closely with the growth team. Um, so. These are probably the most common roles that you're going to see in the market right now. Um, and I group these into categories, but the titles might, might be very different. And I'll show you some examples uh, in, in, in a second. Um, but I wanted to set this preface salary wise. This is a key reason why we all work, right? Like, you know, if I, if I don't have, if I have all the money in the world, I wouldn't be working. So it's the reason why we work. From a salary expectation perspective, though, I might throw this back at you. What do you guys think? What do you think the difference is between, you know, which type of PM gets paid more out of all the five? What do you guys think? Feel free to chuck in the chat. And, and if this triggers some pay rise conversations, <laughs> just tell them that Dave told, told me to, to come to, to you. <laughs> I'm going to show us some benchmarks as well so you can take a look. Yeah, domain PMs, yeah, technical PMs, yep. Um, domain growth, yeah, growth focused. Um, our new venture PM, yeah, all together. Ah, yes, that's, um, yeah, that's a good good question. That's a good answer. Um, I think you guys might have seen the slides, but the thing is, right, the roles, they pay very similar. Um, it's not much different. Um, you might be, you know, a technical PM, like you start as a generalist PM, the difference is probably 100. This is based on SF, uh, um, SF salaries, by the way, not, not in Australia or anywhere else, but I, I see this very similar. Australia, UK, SF, very much similar. Um, so it's not much difference between the roles. So, you know, a generalist might get 138 and then it gets a little bit higher if you're growth PM, uh, domain is a little bit higher. And then even if you go for technical PM, you're looking at difference about, you know, two to $3,000 over a whole year. Like you probably spend that much money on a gym um, anyway. So, um, and of course, the more niche of the role, like if you're like a product manager for the crypto mining space, right? And, you, and, and, um, and, and, you, and you're the only expert in the world that can do this, you can demand a lot of money. But most roles, they are very much similar pay, um, but this does not include bonuses and equity. So uh, I know some companies pay a lot of equity as well. So this is purely base rate. So what I'm trying to say here is the, the, the pay, the base pay is very similar. Um, so you don't really have to uh, think about, well, I need to make a lot of money to be a technical PM. Uh, it's not really that easily. It's the answer, the answer is not that easy. The answer is actually find the right one for you. Uh, and that's what uh, this talk is all about. So let's dive a little bit deeper into each of these roles. I'm going to take us through, what's the difference between a generalist PM and a new venture PM? So uh let's just so come back to this so a generalist pm what do you actually do um well this is where a good quote just to actually summarize all that so generalist pm is jack of all trades <laughs> and a master of none uh, but often better than a team of one uh, that's a very good quote to summarize the the you know a generalist pm 
Um, some characteristics that you're going to see uh, is um, you might have one or two products that you own. And because you're so spread across two things, uh, two, multiple products, you might have one or two products that you own. Um, and then you might be spread across different parts of the product life cycle as well. Um, and we talked about the life cycle over here. So let me just go back to the slide. So as a journalist PM, um, it's not uncommon for you to be working on a product that is that is still in development and still trying to launch something and also managing a product that is in maturity as well. So you might have to be tossing up between these two products. Um, and sometimes a product might go through decline and then you might have to terminate the product. Um, so you, it's very common for you to manage a product across multiple parts of the life cycle. Uh, and that's uh, a first characteristic of a journalist PM. Um, the second characteristic of a generalist PM is you're constantly prioritizing discovery and delivery. Um, there is always a, a you, 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 you're always going to be doing this thing um, for Marty Kagan. It's called like Jude Track Agile, where, where you like discovery and delivery at the same time. Um, and that's very, very common. Um, and also, um, you'd be working, oops, sorry. You'd be working across all parts of the business and you have a large set of stakeholders because you are working towards multiple parts of the life cycle. Um, so your stakeholders would be very, very large. Um, and that's a common role that you're going to see. Um, and in terms of how hard this role is and how much of a, a PM expert that you have to be, um, for my experience, um, you would have to be a, an, an expert around product discovery. So if you're very good at product discovery and understanding what's, you know, what problem to solve and how do you validate problems and how do you come up with a good product strategy, uh, this, is, you, you know, this is a really good role for you because it requires a high levels of product discovery, product, st product strategy. Um, so these two, two skill sets are very high um, with this role. Um, managing external customers, um, that's the middle. This is where you have to go in and do some user testing and talk to external customers. Um, so it's more like the middle. Um, managing internal stakeholders, very much the same. Um, technical skills. So you don't have to be like a super technical person to do a, to become a generalist PM. Um, you can, you got to know technology, of course, uh, but you don't have to be, you know, get to the details of like knowing how to code or, or understanding or writing requirements for an API schema. Um, so don't need to be too deep into that. Um, and then design skills, very much is similar as well. So because you're jack of all traits um, and growth and marketing, very much in the middle, Role difficulty, to my perspective, is probably just in the middle um, as well. So this is probably the most common role. Um, and where they transition from, um, they usually come from, you know, some sort of business background, some sort of like marketing background or project management background. Uh, customer service is a very common pathway to become a generalist PM, uh, sales, um, and pretty much other functions. Um, what's not a direct path I see is like an accountant or financial analyst jumping into a journalist PM. Uh, it's possible it's been done, but it's not a common path. Um, and also if you work in design, tech, BAPO, these are very good transitions as well. Um, challenges though, things that might uh, you have to consider when you're, role, when you're doing this role. Um, so a journalist PM, sometimes you might be too focused on one product um, and you might lose sight of the bigger picture because you're constantly juggling between discovery delivery of you know, multiple products. So you might be too focused on one thing and you'll lose sight on the bigger picture. You don't get as a much broad perspective to say a, a growth PM where you can actually, you know, working out growth across the whole funnel, across the whole product. Um, and you have a lot of priorities and a lot of stakeholders to please. And this is extra, uh, uh, it's an extra challenge in this role. So uh, you got to have a lot of priorities and, and if someone says prioritize like crazy before, yeah, you'd be doing a lot of that. Um, and then if there's a change in the org structure, this role 
it's probably the, the the one that might get impacted. I'm not saying in a negative way. I'm not saying people get fired, but it's a it's a way that you know these people might get shifted to say, hey, look, we're no longer going to focus on this product. Uh, can you go focus on this product instead? Um, so the generalist PM generally would you know will get shifted away um, depending on the changes in the product strategy, changes in the business strategy, as opposed to a platform PM where like well can't really <laughs> we can't really not do this platform anymore because that's important um so yeah so that's the gen generalist pm um and some uh some some job descriptions that you might see in a market uh, is this and i just took a scrap took a screenshot from um from link from linkedin and if you guys get in a deck later you can actually click on these and these are actually roles that's in hire right now so feel free to jump to those um but something that you're going to see uh as you look through the job description to understand well what is a generalist pm versus a growth pm um so the keywords that you should look for is something around you know you should be evangelizing a product vision motivating cross-functional teams um and developers to come along this journey with you uh, you know, those type of words around getting, managing stakeholders and motivating large group of stakeholders. Uh, you should be looking out for words around like, you know, measurable outcomes and goals, uh, using quant and qual to drive decision making. Uh, these are very broad terms, right? Discovering customer needs and align them with um, Pluralsight. This is the, the Pluralsight PM role um, um, across, you know, and achieve his business outcomes. Um, so, and it's a bunch of other stuff. So what you should be really, what, what a generalist PM should do is they should really have a good understanding of user research and human centered design. Um, it's not a must, but it's very good to have that. Um, analytical, of course, because you've got the qual from the qualitative from the user research. So you need to understand the quantitative from the, uh, from the analytical approach, like looking at internal data to draw insights. Um, strong communication, um, also speak in a technical level, of course, um, and also experience in facilitating cross-functional ceremonies as well. David, um, just, a, just a pause check. We have five minutes uh, to for the presentation time, then we have a Q&A afterwards. So, oh, okay, yeah. cool. Well, in that case, I'm going to jump into other, thank you for the time check. I'm going to jump into the other roles then. So, new venture PM. That's basically this next type of PM. Um, some of the characteristics are really about, you know, owning discovery of a new product. And, and you'd be like a, like a mini CEO of the company. Uh, and you have a lot of customer research, a lot of market research to do. Um, and generally, you focus on launch rather than the day-to-day -day management of the product. Um, expertise level, uh, very strong in product discovery, very strong in research. The rest you don't really need to be too strong in, except when you get into growth and marketing. So because of the different spectrum that you see here, this role is actually a fairly difficult role to do um, from my perspective, um, because a lot of pressure to launch something that actually works for the customer. Um, so an ex agency consulting entrepreneurs, uh, these are great places for you. And some of the challenges that you're going to see are like, it's very vague because you're launching a new venture. Um, and managing stakeholders that have a lot of different opinions, that's gonna be a key challenge for you. Um, another role is the technical PM, uh, which is actually a very highly technical role that works with engineers, uh, internal and external stakeholders. Um, and this is a PM that usually come from a software background or technical background of some sort. So if you come from that background, this role is perfect for you. Uh, it's less about creating new revenues but more about capital efficiencies and operational efficiencies. So that's another key characteristics about this role. Uh, and then um, from a expertise level, you probably do less of product discovery and less of product strategy, um, but you do a lot more in managing stakeholders, internal stakeholders, and also very strong in technical skill set. So that's very important. Um, not so much on design, not so much on growth. So it's a fairly difficult role from my perspective with a four out of five. Uh, because you do need to be technical. So, uh, uh, so an engineer, a tech BA are perfect for this role. The downside of this role uh, is that it's not as shiny as a new venture PM, so you don't get the spotlight. Uh, and then, but very important though, and then not everyone wants shiny things, 
Uh, but in most cases, uh, it's very hard to justify the commercial impact because you're looking at operational efficiencies. So, but it's a very, very important role. And this is probably the most solid role that, you know, when a restructure happened, most likely you're gonna keep your job for this type of role. Um, there's also the domain knowledge PM, which is basically, you know, your AI PMs, your payment PMs, your commerce PMs, your mobile focus PMs. Um, and you're always, again, balancing a discovery and delivery of new products, very similar to generalist PM, except that you're the domain subject matter expert. Um, and you will be doing a lot of education um, for your internal stakeholders because you're the AI expert um, in this company. So you'll be doing a lot of that. Um, in terms of expertise, uh, very good with product discovery, product strategy. Um, technical skills is very situational, depends um, on, your, on the expertise that you're offering. Um, design, product growth, very much similar to the middle. And it's a fairly difficult role as well because you're the only person that's in your company that has you know, the single point of success, but also the single point of failure. So that's another key, key reason why this role could be a challenge, but it's very good if you have a subject matter expertise in certain areas. Uh, and the last one, it is the um, growth focus PMs. So the growth focus PMs are you know, different characteristics. So you'd be working across multiple teams, not just in one product or one team. Um, you got, works, you, you'd be working really closely with marketing teams. Oops, sorry. You work, work very closely with marketing teams, other product managers as well. Uh, you work hand in hand. Um, it's a very analytical role. So if you like data or if you come from a science background, this is perfect for you. Um, and then you work, we work on things that have direct commercial impact as well. Um, expertise, on the other hand, uh, you'll be doing you know, product discovery uh, a lot, road mapping a lot, but what's important is growth and marketing. Um, that's the most important part. So as a result, perfect role for someone who comes from marketing background, entrepreneurial background, and a business background, as well as scientists. Um, that's very, very um, analyt analytical. You want to test for things um, and engineering and design. Challenge is that this is a very blurred domain. So you'd be touching across multiple products and people will be like, oh, why are you in my area? Um, and so it's a little bit challenging um, and does overlap with a lot of other work that people do. Um, and it can be ambiguous as well um, for small and medium-sized company. So that's the downside of this role. So yeah, so that's basically the different roles, the five different roles that's uh, in market right now. Um, so whether if you want to become a generalist PM or a new venture PM or technical PM, domain or growth focused, it's really up to you as your personality fits. And, and that's what I encourage you to do. Find roles that fits your background, fits your expertise, because that's really the long-term thing that's going to bring you results. And yeah, and that's basically me for today. Um, and if you want to hit me up, find out more about me, check out uh, productacademy.io. Uh, it's a very good website that lets you learn product management, modern product management uh, at a fraction of the cost. So thank you very up. much, David. Thank you so much for all the advice. Uh, I really hated to cut you short, but we have quite a bit oh. of questions. So yes, yeah, questions we'll, are more important. Yeah, we'll take a few questions. Um, so if you want to, like guys, you can all upvote uh, the questions in Slido. Uh, so we'll start, get started with. Mm, right, loading. All right. Okay, so the first question we have is from Lucia, uh, and she's asking, is there any difference between difference and relationship between a product manager and a product owner? Oh, good question. Uh, it depends on what book you read, what your company structure is, what's your strategy. There's a big debate in the product space around product man manager and product owner. Um, I'm going to share you my perspective coming from the, the teachings of like Marty Kagan and, and Melissa Perry um, and everyone's different. So from my perspective, a product manager is someone that looks after the end-to-end -end product lifecycle and you set the strategy, you set the goals 
And product owner, it's a role that actually you play within a scrum team and it's a hat that you put on. Um, and if you go through the scrum framework, so you do that and you look up at the product backlog. Um, and then when you're actually not doing a scrum framework of building things and you put your product manager hat back on, you become a product manager. So uh, that's the way I see it. Uh, and depends on what book you read, you might have a different definition. Um, but I think that's where modern product management is moving towards now. A lot of people are seeing product owner as a role within the agile and the scrum team. It's just a habit that you wear. So yeah, so that's the main difference. Thank you very much. Uh, move on to the next question. Uh, I'm sorry, we're not taking questions from uh, anonymous, uh, uh, like anonymous submitted questions. So we'll take this one from Byung Chi Kai. Um, he asked, should we go deep or go broad through, uh, throughout a product management manager career in terms of specific area like AI, internal platform, and et cetera? Good, love, love this question. Um, so it depends on where you are in your career path. Um, what I found is there's two tracks that, that, that takes you to be a very good PM. One is the expertise track. Um, and, you know, you work your way up to become a junior PM, senior PM, lead PM, and you become like a principal PM. And, and that makes a lot of money as well. It's a very good role. Um, and, and that's basically the, the craftsmanship path. So you want to take that path. That's something like, you know, becoming a very good AI platform PM or internal PM uh, or growth PM and just become a kick-ass PM in that area. And that's really good. Um, and you might take the other path as well, which is the leadership path, which is the path I'm taking, uh, the growth, you know, the group PM role, and they get into like VP and, and all that stuff. That's the leadership path. And you need to be more of a generalist in that perspective, because you need, you're going to be leading teams across multiple expertise. So you need to be more of a generalist and you take more of a commercial perspective, which is have horns in the back. like, so how do we make money? Right. So you're going to take that type of perspective as well. Uh, so it depends on you. Not, not everyone wants to be a, a you know, generalist and not everyone wants to be an expertise. So it comes up to what you want um, at the end of the day. So, but where you early on, um, go deep, learn the skills, be a kick-ass person in one area. And then as you grow, you can think about the two tracks you want to get into. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the advice. It's uh, very, very helpful. Um, okay, the next question we have, we'll take this one from Amrasa. Which of these PMs have higher visibility and more growth in you know, a you know, software company like Fem? Uh, oh, um, I think they all have visibility. Uh, if you if you go go to like all the fan companies, you're gonna find all the all of these. Um, they are they all have good visibility. Um, so there's not not much higher visibility. It really comes down to you as an individual. How do you drive influence inside a company? Um, so it comes down to you. So it's not about the title but it's about the substance like what do you provide so that's the thing that's going to drive your visibility not the title mm -hmm. itself agreed okay uh our next question comes from uh lucia and it's what what are the three essential soft skills that a pm should have love it i had a slide on this um actually i had eight things so if you want to find out more let me know but the three things is first thing is you got to know your stuff you got to uh, you gotta you gotta have a growth mindset. You gotta be willing to learn things. That's the key thing. Second thing is you you have a critical thinking mindset and you validate conventional thinking with facts and data. Um, that's the second skill set. Uh, and the third thing is ability to influence and lead and, and do presentations in the public uh, whenever you can. So I think those are the three essential soft skills. But I've got a lot more. If you, you can reach out to me, I'll send you my PDF with the eight. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, our next question comes from Mush. Uh, he comes from the innovation space. How does he? How do I break into the PM space as many roles as for tech expertise, computer science, engineering, etc., which I do not have right now. That's a good question. Uh, that's probably a whole lecture on its own. Um, but I highly recommend you check out Academy. I've got the whole YouTube video that talks about that. Uh, but what they look for is uh, around how do you marry up uh, business, tech, and design, all three things together. So you need to look, you need to learn tech if you're managing a product that actually have high tech behind it. 
Um, so you got to do it. It's not something that I can say like you can fake your way around it. So pick the products for that suits your current background right now. So you can get into the PM role and then you can transition into the different styles of Kung Fu that I just talked about. So mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully that's answered. Wonderful. We'll take the last question. Uh, so this is from Timothy. For someone wanting to become a PM, what are the three skills that we should focus on before anything else? You love it. Um, the first skills is doing pick, uh, pick a skill that's within discovery, delivery, or market adoption. Pick one of those skills. Uh, if you are if you come from a design background, you're very good with discovery or product, do that do custom research, do product discovery extremely well. Um, if you're a, a product manager that's very good in, if your background is very good in delivery, be an expert in agile, be an expert in, in, in other delivery methods, do that really well. And if you come from a marketing background and you're very good with market adoption and marketing and growth, do that really well. So pick the thing that, that, you, can, that you can do really well right now and, and focus on that because as you as PMs across the motor of all life cycles, you can get into those roles. Um, so, yeah, that's not really an answer, a deep answer, but it depends on on all three. But just pick one: discovery, delivery, market adoption. Just be kick ass at that. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing 